All right, everybody, uh, welcome uh, to this live pop-up office hour session to discuss what is currently unfolding along the Central Coast in portions of Southern California with respect to some extreme rainfall and worsening flooding that is unfolding particularly in Santa Barbara and Ventura counties. I have a slightly different audio setup uh, than usual since I didn't have time to set up all the nice fancy stuff, so just let me know uh, if this doesn't work. It may not be 100% audio quality, but it should be about 95%, so just let me know if there are any issues with volume or quality. So you're actually not going to see a lot of my face today uh, because I'm going to br shortly bring up uh, the the radar and satellite imagery and just cut right to the chase uh, but the reason I'm doing this is that there has been some torrential rainfall in fact there has been for much of the night uh, especially in parts of Santa Barbara and Ventura counties as this cutoff low uh, has essentially uh, stalled uh, off the California coast and has been slinging uh, bands of uh, very uh, unstable air, very moist air, uh, almost perpendicularly to the transverse ranges of Southern California. Uh, embedded within these torrential rain bands have been some strong to even severe thunderstorms, or have there been some mini supercell storms uh, embedded within this with potential for water spouts or tornadic spin up So this is actually a flash flood and even severe convective weather type scenario for parts of Southern California right now. This is a genuinely dramatic storm. And in Oxnard, particularly overnight, uh, there, there were downpours that uh, preliminary data suggests were probably the heaviest downpours ever observed in that part of Southern California, at least. Uh, with hourly rainfall rates over three inches per hour sustained for over an hour and five minute rainfall rates of over half an inch half an inch of rainfall in five minutes is an exceptionally large amount of rain and that is getting close to the kinds of rainfall rates uh, that, that that preceded the uh, devastating montecito debris flows now i'm not saying that that is necessarily in the cards but this is the kind of rainfall that we're talking about. That, of course, was a confluence, uh, the result of a confluence of very extreme localized rainfall, but also a very large, severe late season fire. We don't quite have that same background set up, at least in terms of burn areas along the central coast this year, but there are some more recent smaller fire footprints that could be at risk. And frankly, uh, at that level, of uh, rainfall rates, uh, just about any creek, stream, or street is at significant risk of flooding. That's just a phenomenal amount of water. And the thing is, these weren't brief downpours that ended. In fact, things are re-intensifying now uh, quite considerably, and rainfall rates could approach that same level again. And so if it happens again, that's going to be even more problematic. So without further ado, I'm going to bring up the radar. So you're going to see my face disappear and you're going to see the radar screen pop up. Uh, so really what we, we have going here, and I'll center it in the screen. Uh, by the way, while I'm doing the radar tour, I, I won't immediately be able to see questions, but I'll periodically uh, go back and forth between the screen and the one in which I can read the chat. This is a pretty remarkable radar uh, view from, I'm going to zoom in some more, over Southern California. There's a bunch of things you can see here. First of all, from the National Weather Service, you can see the polygons where there's special marine warning and more importantly, a flash flood warning for most of Santa Barbara County, including city of Santa Barbara and all the other populated parts of the Highway 101 corridor in coastal Santa Barbara County, but as well as the mountains. There is a lot more rain on this map than it appears. Uh, I'm gonna note something just for uh, the viewers. Sorry, they updated this app, so I need to find, there's the drawing tool. So you see this, this linear feature. It doesn't mean that there's a very narrow linear rain band over uh, the transverse ranges there. Uh, this uh, actually just means that the radar, uh, the radar beam, the, the radar site is right here, uh, just northeast of Ventura. Uh, there are mountain peaks here uh, and here that are blocking the radar beam. And so really, uh, this is just what the radar sees as it's peaking in between these mountain peaks. Uh, but in reality, there's also 
uh, whoops, uh, in reality, there's also torrential rain falling in these areas where this radar is not seeing it, and then also here. So this is a very broad, contiguous area of rainfall. So I just wanted to point out that radar beam issue. The other thing uh, that we can see is that there are some pretty uh, impressive convective uh, individual cells sort of in this area. Uh, you can see these sort of these, these red areas, these little blobs as they spin up and fade. Those are embedded torrential, genuinely torrential tropical like downpours with some lightning. In fact, uh, we're seeing uh, true thunderstorms, uh, whoops, there again, uh, developing once again over about Thousand Oaks just west of Malibu. So you can see there are lightning strikes being observed within them. So this is a subtropical, extremely moist subtropical plume with pretty good uh, jet forced dynamics, uh, an unusual amount of atmospheric instability likely contributed by the extremely warm air mass and the near shore warmth of the ocean waters. This is meaning that very torrential rainfall is falling even in lower elevations. This is not just an orographic. Of course, the orographic, the mountain areas are seeing even more, but in this case, even the coastal plain uh, down in Oxnard and Ventura uh, along Santa Barbara, the coastline as well, seeing just torrential downpours. And I will point out uh, that last night, the area that saw three inches of rain in an, in an hour is essentially here. This is an area that is, it got a bit of a break, but is about to experience more torrential rainfall. So I would expect flooding to resume and potentially worsen uh, further uh, there and also along the Santa Barbara coast and in the mountains above it as well. There's been less rainfall uh, out to the east as we get into western LA County, uh, but now that's filling in with the torrential downpours and thunderstorms, and so some flooding issues might develop there sooner rather than later. The other thing I want to point out is, uh, sorry for all the, the movement, unintended movement, Check, take a look at the direction of motion. So the, 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 the cutoff low is offshore exerting a, sort of a wind flow uh, kind, kind of like this, uh, which means that uh, you, you, you sort of have these, these training, the, what are known as training bands. Um, Training meaning that this, these, these convective elements move over the same region uh, over and over and over again. So, for example, if you're, if you're in, uh, now granted, right now this is offshore, but if you're along this axis, you're just going to get hours of torrential rain and thunderstorms. Now, of course, all of this is making landfall, and it's hitting essentially Santa Barbara, where I'm hearing people say it's raining heavier uh, than they've ever seen it before. And, Although I'm sometimes skeptical of that, the data suggests that this may in fact be one of the most intense short duration downpours that this area has ever seen in some places, particularly with that three hour, three inch per hour reading in Oxnard last night. I did a quick check of the NOAA precipitation atlas, and although uh, those of you who know me well as a climate scientist, I'm a, a bit of a skeptic of estimates of multi hundred or thousand year return intervals because frankly we just don't know enough about very rare precipitation events to make that claim. I don't think, however, all of that said, the quick and dirty glance at the NOAA precipita precipitation atlas looking at both five hour rainfall rates above half an inch an hour, sorry, excuse me, five minute rainfall rates above half an inch, which was observed, and one hour rates above three inches, which was also observed. Both of those are in the thousand year recurrence interval plus territory for the Oxnard portion of the coastal plain. So I don't necessarily think that anybody should believe that number exactly, but the point is this is likely the heaviest rainfall that has been observed in this area in recorded history and is likely a, a multi-centennial kind of event, whether it's 200 years or 500 years or 1,000 years. I don't know. I'm not sure that we can even make good estimates, but the point is these are genuinely extraordinary torrential downpours and they, and the, importantly, they're continuing. This is not over yet. I'm going to remove my drawing and do a little bit more of a radar tour. So this is the, the radar uh, site located, they call it Los Angeles, but it's really uh, up by Ojai on a lower hill. Um, I just circled it. I'm going to go uh, up the coast, uh, this, look at the central coast radar at Vandenberg Air Force Base that gets us sort of the west side view. Um, again, it, this is missing a lot of what's going on. The situation in Ventura and Santa Barbara County is much worse than it appears here, but it's just to point out that there is also there are also some downpours elsewhere along the central coast, but they're not as severe right now as what's happening 
in Santa Barbara and Ventura counties. Although it is interesting that this is picking up, this is denoting there was some lightning over the mountains of Santa Barbara County. So these are thunderstorms. These are actual thunderstorms. Let me go further south then and look at this. These are the radar site in the Santa Ana Mountains. This is going to, again, this is too far away from Santa Barbara and Ventura to really get a good handle on it, but this is going to get a better view over LA County because of where the mountains are located. And you can see, again, these, uh, these torrential the downpours and thunderstorms are now starting to develop a little bit farther to the south and east over western LA County. And then it is possible that this blob is going to continue to intensify into thunderstorms and downpours. And then that might move over more uh, heavily populated portions of LA County, downtown San Fernando Valley, maybe coastal Orange County later too. So this event is expanding and intensifying. I'm going to go back to the LA radar because that's the most interesting one at the moment. Um, yeah, this, this, this is a whole lot of water headed for Santa Barbara and Ventura counties and there's already been a whole lot of water. There's reports of widespread flooding. I haven't heard reports of catastrophic flooding at this point, but I would not rule it out given what's coming uh, and given what's already fallen. So again, widespread road, close, road closures, widespread street flooding, widespread creek flooding, it's going to get worse and could become something more serious. One challenge right now is that Twitter has been very unreliable. Twitter X, whatever it's called today, um, it was down for most of last night and it looks like most agencies have stopped posting on it now that it's back up. Maybe, maybe it's not back up for everybody. So there is not a great source of information. Again, I've looked at all of the other social media sites and there really isn't anybody posting. There's no agencies posting in real time. This is, this is the real travesty of the situation that has evolved the Twitter is that there aren't great options for following these things in real time. You can look at the data like this, which is alarming, but without real confirmation of what's going on on the ground, it's difficult sometimes to know what's happening in real time. So I really hope we solve that problem sooner rather than later. But for now, I'm going to go and actually check and see if there, there have been any updates on Twitter. Um, and then I'm going to uh, look at the questions uh, that we see. Um, all right, let me just check and see if there's any reports of worsening flooding that are that, that, that's visible right now. Nope, there's really nothing going on there. Checking the Weather West comments section because increasingly that's uh, <laughs> that's becoming a competitive place to go with the uh, with Twitter being as it is now. Uh, yeah, okay, not a lot of new info. So what I'm going to do now is jump to a different uh, image tour. Uh, you're seeing radar uh, right now, but what I want to show you next is satellite imagery. So bear with me for a moment here. Uh, you will see, uh, yes, okay. So now what you're looking at is uh, satellite imagery of uh, of really the West Coast and California generally. Um, there is a cutoff low. Uh, I think you'll see my cursor on screen, so I'm going to try and align it. Um, there's a cutoff low spinning. It's quite obvious here. This is that deep southerly and southeasterly flow that I mentioned. You can see this big blob of green and yellow and orange, the, this, this is the convective cloudiness that is back building. So you can see how it's strengthening and building up right bef uh, as it trains. So a, like, the term comes from different train cars moving along the tracks. Obviously one, tr one train car follows the next uh, in, in quick succession uh, along the same orientation, the same axis, because of course the tracks are fixed. That is why this process is called training. These convective cells are moving one after the other after the other over the same areas and back building. So it's not just one line that's moving through cleanly, but it just keeps slamming the same part of the central coast from about central Santa Barbara County to western LA County. There's a little bit of an eastward shift. We'll see that later today as this, uh, as this uh, cutoff low uh, progresses eastward slowly, but uh, Santa Barbara, Ventura, LA counties may have hours to come of heavy torrential downpours, so I'm really concerned about what might happen in those hours. Let me see, uh, I'm going to look at, take a look, slightly different image. This is the visible satellite image and I'm actually going to zoom in here a little bit uh, if I can. Uh, there might not any, be any great 
uh, kind of great sectors here. Um, okay, well, this gives you a slightly better sense of what's going on. Um, yeah, it's a little bit cut off, so I'm going to keep it zoomed out. Um, again, what you can see here uh, is this plume um, of convective cloudiness really just taking direct aim on the central coast. And this cutoff low is not going anywhere quickly. There are hundreds of miles of thunderstorms and torrential downpours ready to funnel into Southern California, strengthening as they go. So I'm going to bring the radar back up now, and then I'm going to toggle um, to I'm going to toggle back to uh, the portion where I can read comments, see what people are saying. Um, once again, there's, there's quite a lot of viewers here, so um, thank you for that. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, folks in Santa Barbara County saying that they can't hear me, but it's not because the volume is low, it's because the storm is so loud. That's, uh, and the storm being, in this case, there's not a whole lot of wind. It's mostly just the, ra the rainfall rates are so loud on people's roofs that they can't, can barely hear what I'm saying. That's kind of remarkable, but I believe it based on what we're seeing. Um, just report after report of people saying, yeah, Santa Barbara uh, lowlands, Santa Barbara foothills, everyone's just saying it's crazy and scary. Uh, in the LA area, um, your, your rain is mostly yet to come. Expect downpours later today. So a lot of folks are saying that it didn't rain as much as predicted. Uh, just, again, this event is very slowly evolving. It's extremely intense in certain places and it'll spread eastward later. Probably won't get quite as much as Santa Barbara County, which is a good thing, but it'll still be heavy stuff. Jay and Oxnard uh, remarking that there was a biblical amount of rainfall last night. I, I think that's a, that's fair enough to say, given that it seems like it's out there in the multi-hundred centennial recurrence interval range in Oxnard in particular. That is genuinely remarkable and probably outside of historical experience. Uh, just a reminder, if it were necessary, that um, with uh, as the climate warms, we're going to see heavier and heavier downpours, both in California and everywhere else. And this is a classic example of the kind of event that is most clearly linked to rising temperatures, as the water vapor holding capacity of the atmosphere increases exponentially with warming. And this is a particular warm, particularly warm year with particularly warm oceans. Uh, on top of a long-term warming trend. So these are the kinds of rainfall rates that we can see these days, clearly because we've just observed them. So we know that they're, they're possible. Um, some, yes, um, let's see. Why are there no tweets of the flooding? Uh, you know, I think the platform is uh, Twitter is not functioning correctly and people are not using it as they used to. That's really all I can say. I, I don't really know anything beyond that, but what I have heard is that the flooding is quite serious and widespread. But it's, again, I feel like we're back in the dark. It almost feels like we're 15 or 20 years ago again in terms of what real-time information is available during disasters. It's, it's we, we really desperately need a a solution to this. Twitter had been the solution for a long time and I, it clearly isn't meeting the the mark right now or these days in general. Um, let's see. Uh, folks are asking again uh, where this radar is coming from. It's coming from, an, it's actually an app. It's called Radar Scope. Normally I don't hawk apps. I don't like most other apps, but this is the only one I have on my phone. Uh, and on my computer, as, you, as you're seeing right now. The reality is radar data, uh, the National Weather Service is stymied from producing user-friendly uh, graphical user interfaces for reasons of political lobbying that I won't go into today. Uh, in other words, you kind of have to dig around on the internet to find the best presentation. Personally, I think that radar scope for radar, for radar data specifically uh, does the best job. So what you're seeing is, is, is essentially me um, using a virtual camera on the radar scope app on my computer. So what you're seeing is radar scope, radar data. Uh, you do have to pay for it, but if you're a weather nerd, it's a pretty good, uh, it's a pretty good use of money, I think. Apologies, just uh, taking a, a sip of tea. 
All right. Um, yeah, folks now pointing out that in um, western L.A. County, it's starting to pour now. So, again, L.A. County is, is about to get hit. Um, so it's it's starting. It's, it's bu building eastward a bit. Um, yeah. Yeah, more reports of alarming water levels. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, not 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 a lot of uh, new comments. I'm going to go back to the radar and continue. I'm sure that as people filter in, uh, this is a pretty informal session. So I'm you know I'm, I'm just looking at things as they come in, um, and I'm going to go back to the radar in a moment. Um, Looks like some people are starting to lose power in Southern California, which is interesting because there aren't widespread strong winds. So this may actually be water and flooding related or localized wind gusts since there are these uh, miniature uh, supercell uh, spin-ups that are occurring. So there could be localized severe winds. Um, let's see. All right, so back to the radar. Um, again, still seeing torrential downpours and thunderstorms funneling into about central Santa, Bar Santa Barbara County, really taking aim at eastern Santa Barbara County and western Ventura, but back building uh, into western LA County right now. Still seeing some lightning strikes embedded in this. I'm going to do a dual pane view, look at the, um, look at the rotational uh, velocities, the storm relative velocities. Um, this is where last night there may have been a, a water spout or a tornado near uh, Oxnard um, with one of these mini supercell embedded in the broader rain band. I'm not seeing any obvious signatures right now, although you can kind of see that there are some weak, uh, we would call them couplets, so uh, inbound and outbound velocities that are of opposite sign, meaning they're, they're, they're in opposite directions. There's a bunch of sort of diffuse areas of rotational velocity signatures right here, kind of uh, sort of in, you can kind of see in the final frame, there's some paired red and oranges, um, sorry, red and greens. Apologies if you're colorblind, this is not a very good color map in that case, but uh, I don't control the color map here. Um, so no real distinctive signatures right now, but this is an indication though that these little convective elements uh, they are they are spinning a bit, so there is clearly some shear in the lower atmosphere that's partly helping to sustain the lightning, the, the local water spout or tornadic spin-ups, and the intensity of, uh, of the downpours themselves. So uh, nothing too remarkable on the rotational velocity right now, but uh, that could change. Um, let me look again at the... Santa Ana Mountains radar, because that's going to get a better look over LA County potentially. And yeah, as you can see, as I mentioned, just already since I've started this live session, this rainfall over coastal LA County, Long Beach is starting to intensify. That may get a lot heavier and turn into thunderstorms soon. So I'm going to keep it on uh, the LA radar since that remains the most interesting one right now. I'm going to zoom in and then leave it leave it here. Again, there is a formally a flash flood warning in effect for Santa Barbara County, including Santa Barbara, uh, the whole 101 corridor as well as the foothills. That's no surprise. I would expect that there will probably be new flash flood warnings issued during this live stream imminently uh, for the uh, at least the coastal portions of Ventura County uh, as well. Uh, Oxnard is getting hit very hard once again. Their daily rainfall total is, I think, going to be astonishing. Uh, probably record-breaking, uh, certainly a daily record-breaking, and perhaps this may end up being the one, e either one of the wettest or perhaps the wettest day on record uh, uh, going back over a century in places like Oxnard and Ventura, that uh, Carpinteria, depending on uh, where these downpours align. I mean, this is just, given that this is already an area that's seen record-breaking rainfall overnight, it's, it's actually re-intensifying to levels almost that we saw last night again. So I would expect flooding to get much worse there. I'd expect the Weather Service will probably issue a new flash flood warning. Um, maybe, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing somewhere somewhere in sort of in this, this vicinity uh, imminently. So if you're there, the flooding is about to get worse. 
uh, stay off the roads and be prepared if you're in a low-lying area. This is a pretty remarkable event. All right, let's see. Again, I'm continuously checking to see what's coming in. Um, yeah, so just just to uh, clarify the rainfall rates, these are the rates that are being reported by the Weather Service in LA officially. And of course, these need to be validated. Uh, but the, there actually were a couple different gauges that recorded um, these extremely high levels. And just, just for perspective, uh, between uh, 12.58 a.m. last night and 1.58 a.m., so in the middle of the night, the Oxnard Civic Center uh, received 3.18 inches of rain. So well over three inches in one hour. And two and a quarter inches fell in just half an hour during that same window. Incredible. But I actually think that the, these other values, uh, a different rain gauge at the Ventura Auto Center are even more impressive. In 15 minutes during that same window, 1.54 inches of rain fell in 15 minutes at the Ventura Auto Center in the middle of the night last night. And in five minutes, 0.87 inches. So almost an inch of rain in five minutes. And again, these are areas within a couple hundred feet of sea level right along the populated part of the coastal plain. This, this is not up in the mountains. These are extraordinary rainfall rates uh, for the lowlands without any orographic forcing at all. Um, I believe actually that 0.87 rate, if it had, a, you know, it, that's measured on a five minute interval, but if it were sustained for an hour, you'd get something even more ridiculous, like 17 inches of rain in an hour. Now, we did not see that, and it would be it would be almost impossible. In fact, it probably would be impossible to sustain that kind of rain rate in this air mass. But the point that it was even able to do it uh, for that for five minutes is a real testament to how extreme things are. And frankly, the radar looks almost as intense now as it did then. So we may be repeating this right now. Um, I'll zoom in on Oxnard right now. Um, yeah, I mean, just look at that. Uh, that's just an, an exceptional uh, reintensification, and you can see back here um, there's more convective showers and thunderstorms developing. So again, my prediction is that there will be a new flash flood warning for the Ventura Coast soon. Um, all right, I'm going to go back to the comments. Um, look at what people are saying. Uh, what are the chances it stalls more in this area? I mean, it's it's very slow moving and semi stationary, quasi stationary right now. So it is not completely stalled, but it's close enough to it to cause huge problems. Um, comments now it's raining pretty hard in Hollywood Hills. Um, yep, this is expanding eastward. Heavy showers in the LA beaches for the last 90 minutes. Yep, those, that's the, the stuff you can see on screen right now. Uh, so a lot of folks are saying, why is this different than the models we're showing? I mean, one reason why human meteorologists don't always uh, just regurgitate what the models are saying is, well, all models are, are imperfect. Uh, they're not perfect representations of the real world, and human forecasters are often able to make pretty good assessments about what pieces uh, of the forecast that comes directly out of these numerical models is likely to be correct, and which pieces of it might need to be modified or might be wrong. This was a classic pattern recognition scenario. I think a lot of the Southern California meteorologists and myself included, you know, I recognized that this was the kind of pattern that could produce potentially serious flood risk along the transverse ranges, particularly in Santa Barbara and Ventura counties. This was messaged well in advance, even though some of the models weren't necessarily showing very heavy rainfall. And that's exactly what has happened. I mean, the combination of the orientation of the flow pattern, so the south to north flow directly into the transverse ranges, almost perfectly at a 90 degree angle, uh, the, the relative instability of the atmosphere, I mean, 500 to 700 joules per kilogram of CAPE, that's a technical uh, assessment, but that's a lot for this part of the world. 
in an air mass like this. That's a lot of uh, convective available potential energy to work with. That's why we're seeing thunderstorms and just torrential hourly downpours. The ocean is unusually warm, the air is unusually warm, there's an unusually deep subtropical connection, and there is a strong subtropical jet stream that is helping to maintain uh, at least some uh, difluence, upper level divergence in this area relative to this subtropical jet streak. So there is favorable dynamics, there is a lot of moisture available, there is perfect orientation and flow for orographic enhancement, uh, there is an unusual amount of atmospheric instability because of the unusually warm motions and the unusually moist atmosphere. There's a lot of things that came together that were pretty clearly going to come together uh, in a way that really uh, amplified uh, what's, what's going on now. And so I guess the point is this was actually very well predicted and this is a classic example of an event where you're really going to miss the bigger picture if you only look directly at numerical model output without offering any con context or uh, regional understanding. Uh, there, there is still in, in operational weather prediction and forecasting a significant pattern recognition component and historically that has meant that people, humans, who have been at this for a long time recognize visually and, and quantitatively the kinds of patterns that have resulted in certain kinds of extreme conditions in the past that this is one of those patterns, that's not explicitly something that we can represent in traditional process-based predictive models, and it maybe is something that new, you know, AI, machine learning type approaches might be able to capture, but they certainly haven't yet. So with pattern recognition, ironically, it's still the human eye and the human brain are still significantly better than even some of the existing AI approaches for extreme events like this, at least as you know, as far as has been demonstrated to present. I'm very open to the notion that that might change, but we're certainly not there yet. And right now, this was a predictive success for the humans. It's not like the models did terribly. This is a cutoff low and they're difficult to predict. So they actually did a pretty good job anyway in that context. But the details and the level of concern about extreme flooding risk in Santa Barbara and Ventura counties, that was really something that came from the human forecaster side and has certainly come to fruition. Um, Brent asks, how about pushing to threads for most of Twitter's former functions? Uh, I'm on threads, but the reality is there's like no information on threads about this. There's somehow even less than on Twitter. So the reality is I can't be the only person on a platform. It just doesn't work. There has to sort of be community buy-in. That's what we had on Twitter. And even in its current form, there's still more of it on Twitter than on any other platform. I have no particular allegiances to particular platforms, and if this really scales up somewhere else, the real-time disaster communication, I'm all for it, and I will go there. But at this point, I don't see that happening anywhere other than Twitter in a, in a severely reduced degree. It's still there, but it's not as robust as it used to be. And this is not really to... Uh, make a complaint. It's just an observation about the way things are and I think a lot of folks are assuming they can go there to get this kind of information as they have for the past, the better part of the past decade or so and it just isn't there anymore and sometimes the system just doesn't work. Like much of last night uh, when the record-breaking rainfall was moving into Oxnard, uh, Twitter was completely down for most people. It was just a completely inaccessible website with no content. So that has seems to have improved today but um, you know, uh, I'm still, so if folks have good ideas about where to go, let me know. If, if there's a particular uh, venue that has been doing a really great job during this event, I would be really curious to know that too. Um, let's see. Um, would you expect this to see this push north enough to bring significant rain back to Santa Cruz today? Nope, that's, uh, you're done for a while, you're going to dry out. Uh, but as you point out, more than six inches already at Ben Lomond this week, that's great. Um, have some time to dry out before the next peak in the storm cycle, early to middle uh, next week uh, in Northern California. Um, Kino uh, suggests going to tilt four on radar. Uh, I can do that. Uh, let me see. So this is this literally means okay. That 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 does fill things in a little bit. Uh, this literally just means that. Um, 
uh, whoops, sorry about that. Uh, the app defaulted to uh, some geographic presets, but let me just go back. All right, here's what we were planning on seeing. Um, so tilt four literally just means the, the ray dome uh, can literally tilt the radar beam to different elevations. And when it, at low tilts, it means the, that the lower hills and mountains can interfere with it. At high tilts, it means you're looking higher up in the cloud so you're, you're, getting, you're looking at rainfall that's falling well above the ground, but it also means that you can fill in the picture because you no longer have the hills uh, blocking. So again, this is what it looks like higher up in the cloud. You can see up in this area that was blocked by the radar beam before, it now fills in. The other thing that you can see is that this is essentially, this, this blob of torrential, heavy to torrential rainfall is essentially discontinuous. It, it, it's unbroken uh, and as you, also, as you can see, it has recently expanded significantly to the east. So, uh, and again, there is, you know, there's lightning, there's more lightning uh, popping up. These are thunderstorms. These are torrential showers. Yeah, so I'm just circling some recent lightning strikes. Um, clearly, if you're in Thousand Oaks, Simi Valley, up toward Fillmore, uh, between Oxnard and, and uh, really, and the San Fernando Valley, you're probably hearing thunder right now and the rain is starting to pick up. So this is just a picture of what it looks like at a higher tilt. This is the same radar site. I'm going to go back to tilt one because you get higher resolution uh, and you get better view of what's going on closer to the ground. So, but as you can see, uh, we do lose some of the, some of the continuous uh, information up here because of the topography. So going back to playing this forward, let's see here, yeah, so um, the most intense precipitation right now looks like it's sort of on an axis from about Ventura, Oxnard, uh, out towards Simi Valley, this sort of seems, but again, uh, if we go, whoops, that was unintentional, uh, if, we, if we look south, there is plenty more where that came from that's moving again towards these areas that are already experiencing flooding. And this whole region here, um, essentially, it, there's not a continuous band offshore, uh, but it's sort of developing and back building as this all moves to the northwest. So uh, heavy showers and thunderstorms, locally torrential, are just popping up, and that's likely to be the pattern for hours to come. All right, let's see what else. Uh, let's see what else I can find. Uh, let's I'm going back to Twitter just to see what's what's going on. Um, looks like Santa Barbara County is back to one inch per hour rainfall rate sustained. That is that is a problem. Uh, that's a lot. Um, Yeah, so there are going to be places that greatly exceed predictions along the central coast, Santa Barbara, Ventura counties, in terms of how much rain fell. Uh, the corollary is probably that there will be other places that decede and fall below. Um, all right, so I'm getting some uh, some imagery of um, major flooding uh, on the on-ramps with cars floating away uh, under Highway 101 in Santa Barbara. Um, that's an update from Caltrans via the Weather West blog comment section, so thanks for that. Um, yeah, there's other images of major street flooding and flash flooding. Uh, we're talking about flooding above the hood of cars, so this is enough to wash away cars. That's definitely life-threatening flooding. Uh, if it can wash away a car, it can wash you away without any difficulty. Uh, that's for sure. Um, I'm retweeting a couple of things right now. Uh, it looks like uh, Mission Creek appears to be flooding in Santa Barbara. Uh, what I will say is that this appears to be relatively I would not call it clean water, but relatively clear water, meaning this is probably not the result of a major debris flow. This is actually like traditional flash flooding on bodies of water, which I guess is um, in some ways better than there being another catastrophic debris flow at this point. 
uh, but it, it can be, uh, it, the downside is it actually might be more widespread, so this is probably affecting more people directly. Uh, and that could change, because again, there is very intense precipitation still, hours of it to come, and it is re-intensifying. So whatever we're seeing now might actually get worse before it gets better. Um, just continuing to uh, check out what feedback uh, is popping up. There is a little bit more information coming out now. Um, let me just check the weather service in LA. I'm just looking. I think they're very busy, so uh, they're not. They're posting the the warnings to Twitter, and that's about it. There's not a lot of other details. So we're we'll, have to, we'll continue to sort of be informal, glancing at the Weather West comment section, things like that. Um, all right, I'm going to look at the comments again that are coming in. Take another break to look at the comments. Uh, you may see an ad roll briefly. I just need to read through the comments to decide what to talk about next. So just give me uh, 20 seconds here. Okay, uh, hopefully everybody can hear me again. I'm just going to continue down looking at comments. There are great questions coming in. Uh, one question, uh, could you explain the process of intensification of the training bands as they approach the coast? Uh, so I'm going to go back to the radar with my drawing tool. There's a few things happening. Uh, one is that there is essentially convergence. So you can kind of see this uh, a little bit, is that there is, uh, there is air essentially, and you can see this based on the storm motions from radar, it's not just uniformly moving, but there is some uh, movement from the east towards sort of a, a, a central axis, and also uh, from the west, approaching that same axis from the west. So there is con near service convergence along this boundary. I'm not even really sure if it's a frontal boundary, but it's some sort of maybe a weak frontal boundary or just a convergence line due, due to horizontal differences in wind. In any case, there is some surface convergence happening along here um, that is causing this, this axis of really intense rainfall. Uh, that's part of what's going on. Uh, now, what's going on over here, whoops, uh, what's going on over here is a little bit different. Uh, this is just pure atmospheric uplift and instability. So these are showers and thunderstorms that are developing all the way from uh, wet West LA into the Simi Valley and Oxnard Plain. Um, this is partly due to, and now I'm sort of doing this in, in, in the vertical dimension, there is upward moving air on the, in the difluent or divergent uh, air on the east side of the low pressure system. There is both uh, surface-based instability uh, or which can be uh, represented using uh, CAPE, uh, convective available potential energy, and then uh, this th th this is uh, greater than or equal to uh, 500 joules per kilogram right now, uh, which is a pretty significant level uh, for Southern California, uh, and there is just generally across really this whole area, uh, really this whole map here. Uh, a broad region of unstable air. So you have these linear bands of essentially uh, surface convergence. Uh, you have these blobs of elevated instability. I'm guessing there are some sun sunny breaks in this area. So you can kind of see how this area is a little bit warm. The sun has been up for a while. Uh, it's heating the surface, uh, both over the ocean and especially over the land. That's contributing to the surface-based instability uh, in this region in particular, which is why we're seeing the development a little bit farther east. Models don't always represent this perfectly, but it's what we're seeing. Uh, and then if we sort of zoom out uh, to this from, from the south, I'm going to get rid of these notations now. In general, there, there is a cyclonically, and I'm exaggerating a little bit for effect, 
Um, but there is a cyclonically curved jet streak at upper levels of the atmosphere uh, all the way down here. So the, at upper levels of the atmosphere, uh, there's a, a jet streak right here. There's a little bit of, there, there's some uh, upper level diffluence slash divergence in this region. Uh, there's upward lifting air. Again, below is out here somewhere. Uh, it's, it, it has that, that cyclonic flow. So there's convergence, uh, there's convective instability. Um, part of the intensification is also, there's also convergence as all this moist, unstable air hits this topographic barrier uh, known as the transverse ranges. Uh, the air is forced to converge near the surface right along this area, this axis, and rise upward uh, due to orographic uplift. So that's part of what's going on as well. So there's a whole complex picture, multiple factors at play. I think the most unusual one is this is a slow moving low with, with unusually high amounts of moisture uh, and atmospheric instability. So the key part again is that cape, that, that instability of the atmosphere. We do not normally see that in California and this is why we're seeing such high hourly rainfall rates uh, with the potential for flash flooding. So now there's lightning occurring out towards Santa Paula, uh, Camarillo, uh, El Rio, Oxnard, yeah, so this whole area, again, these are thunderstorms. Let me move closer to uh, Santa Ana Mountains, go a little bit south and east. Okay, so this is giving you a better view of downtown LA. Uh, as you can see, as I mentioned half an hour ago when this started, uh, these showers and thunderstorms are intensifying. Now there's very heavy rain falling uh, from uh, Inglewood, Santa Monica, so really the, the, the west side of LA, west of downtown is now getting hit pretty hard. Again, now, next in line, I would not be too surprised if this area started to fill in with showers and thunderstorms, that includes downtown LA, East LA, uh, San Fernando Valley is already starting to fill in, but that might happen too. Um, let me zoom out a bit again, see what's going on. Um, yeah, as you can see, this just goes really far back. So as usual, I'm gonna go up just to look at San Francisco, just to point out to people that what's not happening up north um, there is some rain, the, the northern extent of the rain shield, it could, could maybe get as far north as Salinas and Fresno today, but in this area generally, the rain will be lighter and less intense than it is further south. So some rain south of Monterey Bay, south of Fresno today possible, but I don't think there's going to be uh, really anything other than isolated showers north of that. So this has really turned into a central coast and southern California event. Um, there, it is possible that the, that the northern part of the central coast, so we're talking like uh, San Luis Obispo, southern Monterey County could see some heavier rain later. Again, not as intense as we're seeing uh, down here, uh, but still possible. And there was already a lot of rain up there, so there could be some localized residual flooding issues up north. Going back to Los Angeles, though, because again, this is the most interesting radar, bringing the loop back up. Um, I'm going to go to tilt 2, a compromise, see what happens. Okay, so tilt 2 might actually be a better one right now. I'm going to leave it on that for now. Slightly higher uh, tilt into the atmosphere. Um, just gives you a better sense of what's happening. Yeah, I'll, I'll stick with tilt 1 um, just to see, get a better view of what's going on on the ground. Uh, still haven't seen that new flood warning issued for Ventura Oxnard, but it sure seems like it's there's a good chance that it's coming uh, based on the reports that I'm seeing. Um, let's see, just checking everything again since... Uh, yeah, not a lot on Twitter. Let's see what the Weather West comment section is doing. Um, yeah. Folks pointing out that they're not going to be running those errands today that they thought along Santa Barbara Ventura Coast, that's for sure. Probably a good decision. Um, let's see here. I'm just trying to see whether there are uh, other, um, let's see, looking at the Ventura County Scanner account. Uh, there have been some localized evacuations due to flooding. 
some swift water rescues. Again, I suspect there are more that I haven't heard about just because the information flow is pretty bad. Uh, just given the magnitude of these of these rain these rainfall rates, it's pretty hard to imagine. Um, I'm actually I'm gonna do a quick search for Santa Barbara since hashtags don't appear to be working. Um, let's see what's going on here. Um, a lot of ads. Uh, Yeah, just lots of, there's some images of street flooding, although a lot of this is from some hours ago, and it well may have gotten worse since then. Um, so, yeah, not, not a lot of information right now. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll just stay on for a bit. Um, one thing I might do today is I might leave this live stream on for a long period of time while I'm not personally available. I might leave the radar up and return periodically. Uh, so I'm not gonna do that yet, but I am thinking about leaving this up. So there won't be any audio commentary, but I'll, I'll drop back in periodically and maybe try to leave this up for a while since the stream at least the internet connectivity issues from some weeks ago seem to have gotten better now that I have strung this wiring in. So um, let me look at comments again, see what's going on. Uh, comment that Santa Barbara in the last hour got an inch, 1.6 inches of rain in the last hour. Again, this is on top of everything that's already fallen. Uh, that's remarkable. Yeah, um, report that large portions of Santa Barbara are flooded from uh, Elliot Jacobson. Thanks for that. I certainly believe it. Um, I'm surprised we're not seeing more images of it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see some additional comments. Yeah, there's a comment from Lauren that there really isn't much uh, on any of this on Blue Sky or Mastodon either. Yep, that's been my experience, unfortunately. Uh, will Do I think that a new persistent band will develop over San Fernando Valley? It's possible. It may not be as persistent, but it could be quite heavy on and off, and there could be thunderstorms. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. Uh, report from Benjamin of very heavy rain in Santa Monica. So as mentioned, and as you can see, uh, this is now extending. Uh, so let's, you know, for fun, let's go back to the Santa Ana Mountains radar, zoom in on west side of LA. And uh, the report was from Santa Monica. That totally makes sense. This intense band of rainfall is developing over that region. And now, even more intense, right over uh, central LA, all the way from uh, West Hollywood back down uh, towards Compton, a swath right through central LA. Very heavy rain now falling, and probably going to hear some thunder soon. That would be my guess. Um, again, ongoing lightning uh, up in eastern Ventura County. Let me actually take a, a look further to the even farther to the south. Let's go to the San Diego radar, see what things are going on off the coast there. Not nearly as interesting at the moment, but the one thing I would note is that this almost looks like the outer band of a tropical storm. Um, it's very possible that these fairly weak convective showers now will turn into torrential downpours and thunderstorms later, and so they may affect the Channel Islands. They may continue to train up into LA County later. Uh, and eventually they may back build sort of affecting the immediate coastline uh, in Orange and San Diego. So that's a ways out. It's not quite clear what's going to happen, but uh, there is a lot going on out there at the moment. So let's go back to LA. Zoom in again. 
Um, again, for those who have joined more recently, pointing out that the reason why you're not seeing precipitation up here on these awkward angles is not because it's not raining heavily, but because the radar beam from this location is blocked by the coastal mountains and the topography. Um, yeah, so this, this most recent axis of heavy to torrential downpours is sort of uh, moving, uh, it's passed through Oxnard now, and it's now hitting Ventura Hard and Santa Paula, Ojai area. Um, so it looks like Oxnard might get a little bit of a break again uh, in the next um, 20 or 30 minutes before things probably re-intensify once again at some point. Right now the action is really increasing over LA County. Alright, let's see what else uh, comments wise. Um, All right, a request to go back to the satellite. That's a good idea. Let me just check uh, for the updates real quick. Uh, go back to the Weather West comment section, see what's going on. Not a lot of news. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, I'll bring, yeah, I'm going to do just that. I'm going to bring the satellite back up. So. Just give me a minute. I gotta, I gotta pull that up. Okay, this should be what you're seeing again. Again, this is now live satellite imagery. Um, okay, so I'm actually gonna mm, maybe I'm gonna go to a different satellite uh, zoom level since it's gonna be easier to see what's going on. Um, Yeah, the challenge here is that what I really need is I need to zoom out a little bit more. Okay, this this view might might work uh, a little bit better. So what you'll see is uh, essentially. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I I used the wrong window here. Uh, let me just revise that to the broader window on the correct side of things. Okay, now what you'll see is a wider satellite. Yes, there we go. Wider satellite view. These are the, the so there's a little bit of a, what's known as a Fujiwara effect going on where there is, uh, you can kind of see how there's a broad center of circulation. More broadly speaking, this is the whole cutoff flow. It's quite a large one. You can see that it's affecting flow all the way into the deep subtropics. So you can see where some of this uh, subtropical moisture is coming from. You can see the unstable air with all of these uh, puffy cumulus clouds in this area. But the thing I wanted to zoom in on, this is the plume that's currently stalled over the central coast, LA County, bringing torrential rainfall and flooding. And there's two separate centers of vorticity, of cyclonic spin, uh, slightly larger one here, but also another weaker one up here. This probably means that the progression of the cutoff flow and the weather today is, is especially difficult for the models to capture. These motions are pretty exquisitely chaotic in the true fluid dynamic sense. So often there are significant uncertainties, partly because we don't have good observations out here. Uh, there's no weather stations, there's few ships and aircraft. So we have satellite imagery, we have indirect imagery, but we don't have perfect information on initial conditions, so the models don't always get it right. The Fujiwara effect means that there are two separate centers of cyclonic vorticity orbiting a common center. So the cursor is now, this is the common center, and you can see visually there's one area of spin here and another area of spin here. So the common center is probably somewhere in here. The problem with this is as this whole center of circulation, this whole cutoff flow moves gradually eastward in this direction later today towards Southern California, I think that it's this the vorticity, uh, cyclonic vorticity center, this approaching the California coast could lead to an even more widespread outbreak of showers and thunderstorms and potentially flood risk. So uh, there is flood risk all the way from essentially Point Conception down to San Diego today. It is highest with the places that have already been seeing it. 
but there is the potential for thunderstorms developing here. And now I actually want to zoom way in instead. Uh, instead of zooming out, take a much closer look at what's going on in Southern California. Um, yes, this is the view I want. So now uh, what you're seeing is a much closer zoomed view. You can see this huge plume of convective clouds, showers, and thunderstorms moving into the central coast and just sort of plowing right into the coastal mountains. But do you see what I mean about the convergence? So look, the, the angle of this low-level winds uh, sort of converging with this band. So there's inflow. Uh, it's sort of along a central axis. Also, this is indicative of wind shear because these clouds down here are probably much lower than these. So the upper level clouds are moving to the north northeast. The low level clouds are moving to the northwest. So that's providing both probably some level of convergence and also some level of wind shear. And importantly, this air here is warm, moist, and unstable, and it's moving in underneath cooler and drier air to the west. That is the classic situation where you get convective development and thunderstorms, which is why in this region right here, we're getting a lot of lightning right now along with torrential downpours. So again, this is a fairly interesting and unusual setup for Southern California. Uh, and let me see, in fact, if I can bring up some additional uh, information about uh, the details here. Uh, there are some, there may be some overlays that I can add. Yes, here we go. Um, so this is the composite radar. You can kind of see how this is aligning with these cloud bands. This is perhaps the least interesting thing. Um, that's theta e. Yeah, it's a little bit complicated for this presentation right now. Let's see if there's anything showing up. So this is a this is a essentially a somewhat convoluted index known as the supercell composite. Usually it's zero. It means what's the what's the what are the parameters look like for supercell thunderstorms? Usually there, there's no indication of those in California. But it's it's the values are low but not zero over portions of Southern California. So you can see those contour lines in this area offshore, especially where we have been seeing some mini supercells. So indication of the potential for localized severe thunderstorms. Um, Let's see here. Uh, that's not what I wanted to see. Uh, vorticity. This is not. Some of these are not showing up as as expected. Um, uh, let's see. Streamlines. So you can kind of see these streamlines are showing you what the upper level flow is, uh, consistent with what I was showing earlier. Uh, this dew point is not super. Um, okay. So. I believe the convention here, so this, this, this is a, a relatively uh, complicated uh, term, uh, mass divergence. You can see that there's sort of a, a local uh, minimum of mass divergence right in this sort of area that's uh, experiencing all of this really active weather right now. But the main thing I actually, this, this is not quite what I wanted to uh, show. Um, Okay, so here's some lightning data. It's a little bit hard to see, but each of those crosses uh, represents cloud-to-ground lightning strikes. There's other lightning that's not cloud-to-ground. Um, Cape, that's what I was looking for. Okay, this is what I really wanted to show on this map. Okay, so actually Cape is a lot higher even than I said. So look at this. There are pockets of 1,000 or... Uh, 1200, 1300 joules per kilogram of Cape right now offshore. That's really high. That's part of what, that's a big part of what's going on. That is that is high Cape for California. That would actually be respectable convective available potential energy even for places that, that see thunderstorms more frequently. So it's no surprise we're seeing lightning and thunder. It's no surprise that there is some severe weather and torrential downpours. All of this is uh, largely to do with that convective component, which is rare. In this part of the world. So I'm going to leave this up for a moment while I look at uh, the comment section once again. So just bear with me. Uh, there might be a brief break or something. I just need to take a sip of tea. I'll be back in just a minute after I have uh, taken a look at this.
All right, uh, still here, everyone. Uh, a comment uh, from Dale that my friend in Santa Barbara has minor flooding in his yard, but says he thinks they're at the tail end. Should he be more worried? Well, let's take a look at the radar uh, and we'll look at what this, I'm gonna go to a slightly higher tilt uh, for a better indication. Uh, I, it's not over in Santa Barbara. Uh, it's possible that the very heaviest rain is now mostly east, but it could just as easily swing back west again later. So this is a long duration event, and that is indeed a big part of the problem. So there's, as you can see, if you zoom out, there's plenty more heavy rain offshore, and a lot of this is, I'm going to go back to the first tilt, um, zoom in a little bit. I mean, essentially what you can see is that you know all of this offshore is still headed pretty much for Santa Barbara so there's a lot more to come there is a little bit maybe of a lull right now uh, in some areas so it's the rain is tapering off for the moment in Oxnard although it's still heavy in Ventura uh, it's tapered off down by Long Beach but it's intense right now in parts of central LA I'm gonna go to the Santa Ana Mountains site to show you that with LA. So as you can see, zooming in on LA right now, um, it's the back end of this for the moment has lifted northward. So now there's heavy rain in the San Fernando Valley, west and, and north and central LA. Um, I do expect due to the atmospheric instability, you can kind of see how these showers are continuing to sort of back build down here. They're gonna to keep to building into LA County showers and thunderstorms periodically throughout the day. Could be intense at times. I'm gonna leave it on LA, uh, LA radar for now. Um, go back to this. Interestingly, even out toward, I'm gonna go back to Vandenberg because it looks like there's some interesting uh, little convective cell uh, right down here. Uh, let me bring up the velocity and see. Yeah, so there we go. So right now, this is the kind of cell that might produce like a water spout right in there. There's some some smaller couplets. Nothing really obvious right now, but you know, if you happen to be out on the Point Conception, you might see a spin up over the ocean. So point being, there's still a lot of instability. There's still some. Uh, very unstable air, thunderstorms, water spots, maybe even a local weak tornado or two, along with the torrential rain and flooding that's occurring in some areas. So I'm, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave everything on this screen right now, uh, and leave it here for a while. Uh, Oh, sorry, I've been speaking about the radar and have not been showing the radar. My apologies. Um, my apologies. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll bring this up once again. Okay, now you should be seeing the radar again. Uh, well, the main thing I wanted to point out, again, I'll just, since I, since I uh, dropped the ball there, that cell I was talking about is all the way over here. This is the one that might produce a water spout. If you're near Point Conception, you might be able to see it up on the northwest corner of the screen. Otherwise, I was talking about how this current wave of rain is lifting north a bit, so there might be a bit of a break coming into Oxnard, the coast here right now, which is needed. But this is not the end. There's going to be more heavy showers and thunderstorms that are going to develop and fill in in this region and sort of move generally in this direction later. Um, so I'm going to remove my notations, zoom in a little bit, I'm going to pan it a little bit so you can see that cell. And here is where I'm going to leave it. That's, that's what I was actually intending to do. My apologies. Um, looking at comments now again, um, oh, David points out that there may even be a, a tri-lobed Fujiwara effect on the satellite imagery. That's possible. I was looking mainly at the two primary centers of vorticity. Often it's a little bit hard to tell with an eyeball. Uh, but um, yes, let me do one more check of Twitter for the moment and the, the Weather West comment section, see what's coming in. 
Um, any more dramatic reports? Um, all right, report from Santa Barbara that Atascadero Creek in, in, in Santa Barbara, the gauge is now at, at 9330 cubic feet per second, and that is nearing the peak from the major flood event in, in, earlier in, in January of 2023, which is, uh, as, as the reader points out, kind of remarkable, given that this is essentially the first significant storm of the year. So we went from nothing to uh, major uh, flood flows with no break in between. Uh, that's, that is, that is the theme of the year, I think. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I think, is this. I am going to uh, essentially leave this live stream up. I've been talking for an hour. I need a break, and it looks like there is a little bit of a break in the weather. I'm going to leave the radar up for a while, so the chat window will remain open. I won't be actively monitoring it right now, but the live stream will remain up. Uh, you, uh, you're welcome to drop in and out. I will probably return at some point, but for now, I'm going to leave. Uh, I'm going to leave the uh, radar up on the screen. You'll see it without commentary. For now, when I return, the commentary will return, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be checking in today, so you may uh, hear from me again uh, once there's a little bit more to talk about. Uh, this event is not over yet, and it may spread eastward. So I'm just going to leave, um, if folks ask in the chat, feel free to tell them that they're not supposed to be hearing anything right now. And then I will return later, but that this window is going to remain open. So uh, thanks for joining. And again, the window, the chat, all of it's going to remain up, and I will return later. The radar will remain live.
All right again, everybody. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, I'm actually going to briefly turn my camera on just so you can see me before uh, I turn it back off again. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you may have noticed I am uh, fighting a virus here in the background. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so, hello again, everyone. Um, I'm kind of liking this format where I am uh, continuing the live stream continuously for hours, where I pop in and out to have some live discussion of the weather events as they evolve. A couple of updates in the live chat also, uh, but then the live radar or satellite remains on the screen at all times, uh, so folks can keep an eye on it and sort of tune in and out as is relevant. Uh, so I'm going to turn the camera off again, uh, but I'm going to talk through what's going on with the radar and satellite once again. So, thanks for joining or rejoining, or if you've been here the whole time, I'm impressed. Whoops, turned the wrong thing off. Sorry about that. All right, uh, whew, this is, uh, just in the last few minutes, this has really blown up again. Uh, let's see what's going on. Uh, all right, so this is the radar out of Santa Ana Mountains. This has the best view of downtown LA. And actually, okay, so we're going to do an interesting radar tour again. Uh, right now, there are some strong torrential downpours and strong thunderstorms developing um, right over the Santa, just north of the Santa Monica Mountains and in the San Fernando Valley. In fact, it looks like the Weather Service has issued a special weather statement for some small hail and some uh, stronger wind gusts and torrential downpours. There's a slight chance these thunderstorms could become severe, producing uh, larger hail, uh, stronger wind gusts, or even a brief tornadic spin-up. Uh, this band now, actually this whole band, so there's sort of one ba uh, convective band here, and then another one oriented in a slightly different direction coming back once again towards western LA County and Ventura County. So the focus right now is a little bit further east than it was earlier. It's still raining in Santa Barbara and Oxnard, but not as heavily as it was earlier. The flood, it's still flooding, but the flood levels are down. That could change again because additional heavy rain is possible, but now the really intense uh, subtropical torrential downpours and thunderstorms have shifted eastward and are probably affecting more populated areas. So now this is in the San Fernando Valley, just north of downtown LA. It is very possible that this line back builds like this, so uh, the rest of LA might get in on it again soon. Um, as you can see right now, zooming out a little bit, uh, Santa Barbara is currently getting a bit of a break. Uh, it's still raining in the mountains, but the coast is, it, it might be a brief break. Same thing with Ventura and Oxnard, although again, it's still raining. Uh, but take a look uh, at what's coming in from the south still. Uh, all of this activity, uh, which again, there's some very intense pockets of rain, is continuing to move in this direction. So in general, the flow sort of is, is well, let me, let me uh, zoom out even more. Sort of what we're seeing right now is there is flow that's, whoopsies, uh, there's flow that is almost due south to north down here, veering a little bit more uh, southeast to northwest um, with the, the, the means flow around the low again the, the low is somewhere out here uh, and there's this cyclonic motion around it uh, but what we're seeing is these you know these continued bands of uh, convective precipitation developing sort of along the along and east of this sort of axis so this is sort of the sector where I'd expect uh, interesting things to continue to happen throughout the evening, afternoon and evening. Um, you can kind of already see this um, with, interesting, that down in the, 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 the Channel Islands, um, it looks like there's an, the island itself is in this unstable atmosphere, just the, the mountains uh, I think it's Catalina Island, are enough to pop up these convective showers. Um, so you can see how they're sort of forming uh, on the lee side 
So the wind, the winds are coming like this, and these showers are popping up on the, the lee side of the island. That's an indication that it's little perturbations in the atmosphere are causing big clouds, big, 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 uh, meaning meaningful clouds, to pop up in this warm and unstable environment. Again, that that warm and unstable environment right now is maximized sort of uh, in this region, and. Within this region, uh, there, there, there is uh, again. There's high. Uh, there's high Cape. It looks like this has been uh, in excess of uh, 1,000 joules per kilogram today, which is quite a lot by California standards. Uh, there is some wind shear. In fact, you can even kind of see the shear. There's still a convergence line, sort of somewhere along here, uh, which is why there's rain there, and also why the, the environment on the east side of that convergence line where there's moist and warmer air uh, with more sunshine than on the west side, why these storms are popping up in that location. So just going back again, we now have this, this, this pretty impressive wave of torrential downpours, and probably these will be producing some lightning soon. San Fernando Valley uh, aligned right with I-5, so uh, I'm guessing that I-5 is kind of a mess right now. The 405, uh, well, the 405 is always a mess, but especially the northern segment of it between about Westwood and the, and the valley is probably pretty bad right now uh, based on radar. Um, this wave of torrential downpours could cause yet another round of flash flooding in Ventura County as it moves and uh, northwestward and intensifies. So you've got about another 10 or 15 minutes before this starts to really move in again. And I continue to expect to see uh, this whole area uh, down here to fill in uh, later uh, with sc scattered showers and thunderstorms. And again, these are not scattered uh, drizzle showers. These, these are pretty intense showers with strong thunderstorms possible, localized flooding possible anywhere. So it's not going to be... So this whole region here where, you know, a good portion of California's population lives uh, won't see as widespread of flooding as occurred earlier up here. Uh, but the flood risk will continue uh, up here uh, as these waves come in, it's already been a ton of rain, there's going to be more. The risk down in this area, I think, is going to be a little more conditional and isolated, but if you're under a, a pr prolonged convective band, like one of these ones right now, that lasts for more than an hour, you're probably going to see some flooding. Again, this is not a usual wintertime weather pattern. It's really not a usual weather pattern at all in California. Uh, notably, there's some heavier convection and some thunderstorms even up into the Kern County Mountains. So there could be some localized flash flooding even up there. The radar does a terrible job. It's, the, the topography makes it really hard to see. You can see there's lightning and there's even some reflectivity from this distance. It says that there's something interesting going on. So a little bit of a radar tour of Andenburg Air Force Base. Uh, Looks like also up here there's some heavier precipitation that's been redeveloping again, although this looks like it's going to stay mostly offshore as an indication that there's still some unstable air. Um, this one is not as interesting as some of the other radars, so I'll go back to LA, point out that there is still a flash flood warning in effect from the Weather Service for Santa, or Santa Barbara County for residual flooding. Uh, whoops, uh, that's supposed to, apologies for the bouncing around. Uh, in this general area, that's mostly from precipitation earlier, but as you can see, uh, the, uh, even as I've been speaking now, uh, this precipitation up here, you can see these embedded red and orange splotches. These are embedded convective elements with once again torrential downpours, and that is moving back towards Santa Barbara. So if this moves on shore, it's likely that warning will be extended, and again, I, I've been waiting for it to be expanded again back to Ventura County. As this moves through, that's also possible. So, actually, even as I've been on here for 10 minutes, this radar screen is looking much more active again, and there is there's a whole lot of torrential showers and thunderstorms. Again, these are producing rainfall rates of 1 to 3 inches per hour at times. That's extremely high. And now, uh, at least over here, it hasn't rained that much yet. But over here, as these move ahead, uh, there's already been multiple inches of rain, including some record-breaking rainfall overnight uh, on the Oxnard-Ventura uh, coastal plain. 
So there was uh, major and widespread flash flooding in this region. Many swift water rescues that I've heard about. Uh, the, the county fire department was essentially, they actually lost a couple of their engines. They didn't get washed away, but they apparently the water was so high that they, uh, they, the engines ingested water. So just a sense that um, even high clearance vehicles were having a problem with the flash flooding that was, that was occurring uh, overnight. Uh, let me do one more radar stop for the moment. Um, well, I'll just actually do two more. I'll look at the San Joaquin Valley just to point out uh, that there is, in fact, some significant rainfall right now uh, in the su southern end of the valley. No flooding probably from this. It's probably a little bit more benign than it looks. Um, high reflectivity might be a little bit misleading up here, but it is raining, you know, maybe as I mentioned earlier, to potentially up to about the Fresno uh, and then uh, westward to Monterey Bay area. North of that, these would just be Virga or Sprinkles. Uh, okay, I'm going to look further south back to Santa Ana Mountains. This might give us a different view of LA. Uh, it does, uh, yeah, so we can see this, this convective, this arc of showers and storms lifting northward. Um, and then if we go south, what happens if I look at San Diego radar? see what's going on. Uh, still less interesting than further north, but that may change later. You can see those uh, showers popping up over the Channel Islands, as I mentioned, and there is thunderstorm activity, again, forming sort of uh, along that line. It is going to move inland eventually, so, you know, everyone, including San Diego County, is going to get something eventually. So I'm going to go back to, and see if it's, uh, let's see which one of these is better. I think LA. I think I still want it to leave it on the LA radar. Uh, yeah, this is the this is the most appropriate. Uh, I might go to a slightly higher tilt, see what happens. Uh, go to a high tilt. Yeah, so these are these are into some intense clouds. So actually, on high tilt, you can see that there is still some heavy precipitation even over Santa Barbara. Uh, it, it's just sort of above the radar beam on the lower tilts uh, because of uh, the topographic uh, blocking or below the radar beam. Excuse me. Um, okay, so I'm going to leave, uh, I'm going to go check comments really quick. Uh, all right, looks like a lot of folks have rejoined, uh, which is great. I, I kind of, as, as I mentioned earlier, I, I may continue to leave this, the radar live through the afternoon and then pop back in to have a couple of conversations, uh, live as I am right now repeatedly since it looks like this is going to be an event that for, for many people in the LA Basin and further east this actually may continue to intensify into the evening. So this is not by any means the last wave. In fact in some places uh, that just saw the downpours from this one it's probably the first wave of multiple uh, multiple waves to come and the flood threat is not over yet in uh, Santa Barbara and Ventura counties, especially eastern Santa Barbara County, all of Ventura County. This area remains under the gun, could very much have problems later. Um, all right, let me pull up satellite. I wanna change, shift gears briefly, and then I'll uh, pipe down again for a little while. Let me change, uh, I have to change the source for the screen capture. Let's go back to, okay. Yep, this is what I wanted to show. Um, so what we can see is once again, uh, this is the zoomed in view. Uh, there's, there's, you can see this, this, this view has lightning strikes, which there have been a few, fewer recently, but I'm seeing some again now. Um, there's small little crosses. The more interesting piece is you can see these thunderstorms blowing up, these tall cumulonimbus clouds sort of in linear fashion blowing up and just ramming right into the coastline perpendicular to the transverse ranges. And as before, you can also see um, these uh, light colored contours in the background. That's Cape Convective Available Potential Energy. And when you see things in the blue and green range, and there's a lot of area like that, that's Cape 750 to 1,000 joules per kilogram or higher, which is again, very high for this part of the world and part of what's going on. Let me zoom out, uh, and you can see the bigger picture. Um, this is satellite analyzed Cape, so it's not perfect, but what I really want to illustrate here is, wow, uh, if you look down here, there's there are pockets of Cape getting close to 2,000 joules per kilogram. That's that's legitimate, like, Great Plains-level atmospheric instability. 
Uh, so just an indication that some strong to severe thunderstorms uh, are not out of the question, but it's, it's also playing into why this air mass is just producing such ridiculously intense rainfall, uh, possibly some of the heaviest rainfall that has been recorded in some parts of the, 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 the southern portion of the central coast of California. Um, that, 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 that is pretty remarkable. Um, again, so uh, I'm going to zoom out even more one more time uh, to get a better perspective on what I mentioned earlier, this Fujiwara effect. I'm going to turn off these other layers so it's easier to see that. Um, yes, okay. Layers turned off. You should see it on the screen now. Essentially, this is the broad, you can see the cursor, this is the broad cutoff low, it's a broad low. There are at least two distinct centers of circulation within it. So one is sort of spinning right here. The other is spinning up here. Someone else pointed out there might even be a third center of circulation or a fourth. I can actually see maybe there's a third over here and possibly another a fourth one uh, all the way over here. The point is these are all centers of vorticity, cyclonic vorticity circulating around a common center. They're interacting each other with each other it can make the trajectory of the parent low, the overall gyre, a little bit uh, difficult to model, which is probably why the models have struggled a bit with the exact positioning. They've done a good job with, with the big picture, but they've definitely struggled with the details. And what is interesting is that actually, let me bring up, I said this was the last one, but there's one other thing I want to show. Um, okay, so here's the water vapor view. Um, sometimes this makes it a little bit clearer to see the convection, um, the convection meaning like the, the, this area here where you can kind of see these clouds blossoming out of uh, out of the ether. That's cl a classic look of deep convective clouds. Um, then the other thing I wanted to show here is a long wave. So this is the infrared satellite, satellite uh, picture. Uh, and you can see here just how cold these cloud tops are getting. Um, these, these are very tall cloud tops, and these are like the anvil on top of thunderstorms. What's interesting though is you can see that these are back building all the way west of Baja, California, and these cloud tops are cooling and intensifying. So what I think is going to happen is that this is the dominant vorticity low. This is the, essentially the, the most dominant location of spin within this low. As this uh, approaches the coast, there's going to be some positive vorticity advection, which tends to induce a broad scale upward motion in the atmosphere. This area over here is already unstable, but now we're going to add some dynamic lift from this approaching vorticity maximum uh, as this atmosphere is already unstable. So the combination of dynamic lift plus instability and things might get even spicier than they already have been and do so a little bit further eastward. That's going to affect even more people across the LA Basin, and then maybe eventually Orange County, LA County, I mean Orange County, San Diego County, and then the inland counties too, Riverside, San Bernardino. So this event is largely over north of about Point Conception, but south of Point Conception, anywhere along the coast, and some places inland, there's still much to go tonight. So I'm going to bring back up the radar. I'm going to bring that up, shift windows again. Um, okay, so that, and that's, and that's what you're seeing again. So here again, this wave of, so actually, both this band, this arc, and then this axis of really heavy precipitation, all of this continues to march towards the coast. In the same places, I've already seen a lot of rain. So I know it looks like it's clearing out down here, but honestly, the more clearing and sun you get right now, the more likelihood of downpours and thunderstorms in a couple hours from now as that surface-based instability builds. And there's one last thing I wanted to do uh, down San Diego radar. It was interesting. Um, let's see, let's put this in animation mode. Well, it's not as interesting as I thought. Okay, I'm just going to leave it on uh, Los Angeles and recenter this a little bit so that you see Santa Barbara. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Check to see what the questions are looking like, comments, whatever it is.
All right, so just some, some nice comments there. Uh, so I'm going to leave it, I'm going to leave, I'm going to continue to leave the stream open. You're going to continue to see, uh, you're going to see live radar. Uh, and I am going to, um, yeah, I'm going to leave the radar up live. The stream will be open. You can continue to use this link. And then I will probably uh, check back in again later, do another audio update. Um, so feel free to just keep this open in a tab uh, or check back in later. I'll leave the radar up and we'll see how it goes. But long story short, record-breaking, extremely intense rainfall in Ventura County last night, and it isn't over yet. Uh, more heavy showers and thunderstorms are headed into the area and will probably expand further eastward across more densely populated parts of Southern California uh, from late afternoon into the evening. All right, so I'm going to turn my audio off for now, and I will turn it back on again uh, a little bit later. Thanks for joining.
All right, everybody. Uh, hello again. Um, just going to check in briefly with folks, do one more radar tour, see what's going on. There's still a lot of uh, pretty active conditions out there, and it's going to actually get more active uh, probably later this evening. So uh, I, I may continue to leave the radar screen up after this uh, interlude. Um, I may or may not join again live later, but for now, I did want to... Uh, you see me on camera now briefly, and then I'm going to go away again, uh, but I'm going to shift over to the, the screen capture. So you're going to see uh, radar again for a radar tour. So, let's see here. Okay, so what I'm seeing now uh, is, you know, the activity, had, there have been... Uh, surges and lulls and activity all day. But here's what things look like right now. There's this nice band of uh, torrential downpours and thunderstorms. I think that's over this, mostly over the San Gabriel's, occasionally over uh, San Fernando Valley, Santa Clarita area. What we're also seeing is just this continuation, uh, kind of unending band of moderate to heavy rain over Ventura and Oxnard proper once again. This is just going on and on and on, adding to already extreme rainfall totals from earlier in the day. Uh, and what you can see here is that there is also some lightning ongoing across interior Ventura County. The radar in this frame isn't showing echoes, but that doesn't mean they aren't there. If we go to a higher tilt, get above the mountains, uh, while we're still blocked by the beam, uh, the beam is still blocked there, what we're now seeing is that the very heavy rain uh, all the way up in uh, the eastern Santa Barbara and western Ventura County has pretty much just been continuous. So it is continuing to pour uh, when you use a higher radar tilt that gets above uh, the topography. So some of the lull is actually just a, a, a false lull because of the fact that the radar beam is being blocked by the mountains. So uh, there is quite a lot of activity uh, still just almost continuously into Santa Barbara and Ventura counties. This has um, been going on for quite a while. It's continuing and it probably isn't going to end all that soon. There's hours more to go, at least. Um, let me do uh, go further up the coast a bit, maybe get a slightly different view. This is from uh, up in Vandenberg, farther up the coast. Uh, here showing even more of the lightning activity. There's actually storms across interior of Ventura, all the way out over the interior of uh, LA County as well. That's that line I showed you earlier. Again, on this map, there's no radar reflectivity uh, in those areas. That doesn't mean it's not pouring there, it just means the radar can't see how much it's pouring there. This is a surface tilt. Let's go to a higher tilt and see above. Once again, let's go to something maybe in between. Uh, you can see the radar picture looks quite different depending on which tilt you use. So it's essentially saying that different levels of the atmosphere look quite different from the same radar site. But ultimately what this, I think what this is telling us is that there this is this broad region of moderate to heavy rain with some embedded heavier downpours from thunderstorms just continuing Santa Barbara and Ventura counties. It's not as quite as torrential as it was earlier when we saw one to three inch per hour rainfall rates at the three inch, uh, three inches in, in a single hour in Oxnard uh, last night is still uh, kind of mind blowing. Um, but Still, all of this is still heavy rain, and it's falling on top of that extreme rain from earlier. Uh, going back farther south, uh, once again to the Los Angeles radar first, uh, again what we see is this steady stream of uh, moderate to heavy rain offshore with occasional embedded thunderstorms just continuing. There have been special marine warnings all day for gusty winds and potential water spouts. That's what this polygon outline is here. Uh, so as mentioned, there's this nice convective line going up over the San Gabriel's, occasionally making it farther west into the valley. Um, that may continue to uh, backbuild in this direction or maybe fill in here. I still think that's going to happen eventually right over central LA County. But now I want to go further south where the radar is looking more interesting than it was earlier. Uh, this is down, uh, this is down Santa Monica Mountains radar. This is uh, a little bit higher elevation. Um, 
so you're you're missing some stuff still but again capturing these uh, cells over the interior of LA County go back south even a little bit further down to San Diego and this is starting to look a little more interesting so if we go south all of this this activity now south of the border uh, over the Pacific Ocean just south of the of the international uh, border uh, but a pretty uh, impressive looking cluster of, of thunderstorms is developing much farther eastward than earlier and all of this is going to move essentially northward uh, eventually probably affecting San Diego, Orange, and LA counties. So th th these clusters of heavy storms could bring some torrential downpours later, certainly some lightning, and there, again there's enough atmospheric instability up in the 1000 to 1500 joules per kilogram range it could even be a severe, uh, strong to severe thunderstorm or two with some um, gusty winds, water spout, or a weak tornado, as might have happened overnight last night near Ventura. I'm not totally sure. So this is more interesting than it looked like earlier, and you can kind of see again, extrapolating the trajectory of this blob, it's headed essentially to the northward, which means it, which means it's eventually going to get pretty close to the coast. Um, I want to switch uh, briefly to satellite, so I have to change the source here, bear with me. Um, okay, so here's a zoomed out satellite view, uh, and if you follow the cursor, what I really wanted to illustrate was this is that persistent line of showers and thunderstorms that's been causing the flash flooding up in uh, Ventura and Santa Barbara counties, but the thing I wanted to draw people's attention to is this new big convective blow up to the south. This is actually the most intense blow up we've seen all day. This area right here is that zone of thunderstorms I was talking about on the San Diego radar. This stuff is going to make it inland. I'm not totally sure whether it'll do so closer to LA County or closer to San Diego County, but somewhere between LA and, and, and uh, San Diego County, this gigantic convective blob is eventually going to make landfall later this evening, probably bring some very heavy thunderstorm activity when it does so. So this will be a fairly dramatic band. As that continues, yet more heavy rainfall is going to continue to stream up into Ventura and Santa Barbara counties. So additional flooding possible up there. And again, the, the risk of at least isolated flash flooding will continue to expand across uh, Los Angeles uh, and maybe even Orange and San Diego counties. Probably not as high of a risk as there was or is over Ventura and Santa Barbara, but, but some risk nonetheless. So. Uh, the thunderstorms would be most likely closer to the coast, but then again, we've actually been seeing lightning activity sustain itself further inland today, all the way into the Kern County Mountains. So really anywhere in Southern California probably could see at least a chance of overnight thunderstorms and some urban street flooding or even some more significant flash flooding as this moves inland. Again, this is a slow-moving low-pressure system. I think the primary vorticity center of circulation is actually down here, and as this pinwheels closer to the coast, doesn't even matter if it makes it all the way to the coast, but as it gets closer, what you have is positive vorticity infection that is favorable for upward motion in the atmosphere, which will combine with the atmospheric instability to bring yet more heavy downpour showers and thunderstorms all throughout the region and maybe some additional flash flooding. So even places that haven't seen much yet, uh, just wait and you may see more uh, overnight. So uh, your turn uh, isn't necessarily up yet. So for all those calling bust, I would wait till tomorrow to do that because tonight uh, there could be quite a lot of activity uh, yet to come, uh, perhaps in more places uh, than not. So I will bring it back to the radar, take a look and see what questions there might be, and then uh, let's see here. Okay, so what you see is the radar view again. What you'll see that at momentarily is the radar view again. There we go. I'm going to go back to the Los Angeles radar, which continues to be, I think, the most interesting for most people at the moment. Uh, again, I mean, the, it's blocked partly by the beam, but moderate to heavy rain just continues almost continuously. Upper elevations, Santa Barbara, Ventura County, with embedded storm cells offshore, and then again inland and again to the south. So all of this is probably going to fill in later. 
a question about whether a strong storms could move into San Fernando uh, Valley LA area soon with cold cloud, cloud tops to the south. Yes, I think that uh, certainly could happen later. Um, that may take another hour or two in some areas, but it probably will happen at some point in many places overnight that have not yet seen heavy rain. Could there be thunderstorms in the San Fernando Valley tonight? Uh, yes, there could be. No guarantees, but there have already been some in some parts of the valley, uh, and they may expand later uh, as they redevelop. So just because these storms are streaming to the north of you right now does not mean that new, new storms aren't going to form to the south and southeast and move over uh, later this evening. In fact, that seems more likely than not. So again, this is an unusual storm in that there is an unusual amount of atmospheric instability. There's an unusual amount of lightning activity and thunderstorms associated with it. And therefore, the hourly rainfall rates, even outside of the mountains, but in the, the coastal plain and the flatlands, is a lot higher than you typically see with a more traditional atmospheric river storm that did not have uh, a lot of atmospheric instability associated with it. This is a genuinely notable amount of instability. It is rare to see a thousand joules per kilogram of cape in this region. And this is a slow moving storm. So uh, parts of Southern California are right under the gun for many, many hours and maybe under the gun for a number of hours more in some places, even as this system slowly finally shifts to the east and does bring some heavy downpours overnight to regions that have stayed mostly dry so far. So given the level of interest and given the potential for this to become more dramatic again later, I am going to leave the radar screen up. I will update it uh, throughout the evening as things evolve. I'll, I'll shift the radar around, I'll zoom in and out. Um, may shift radar sights as the most interesting stuff moves around. Uh, and if things get really interesting again, I may yet again do another uh, oral live session. But at a minimum, uh, you'll sort of see my curated radar view in the background here. The live stream has been going for over six hours now, and fortunately I have not been speaking for most of those six hours. I've just been coming in and out to give updates. Uh, haven't tried this before. I do like this format during really active events that require me to be doing other things. Uh, I really can't do continuous um, speaking for six hours. I don't think very many people can, uh, but what I can do is come back and forth, leave this up in the background. It seems like a good solution. So with that, I'll leave you with the radar screen and perhaps talk to you again later.
All right, folks. Uh, just wanted to do one more live check-in this evening. Um, again, you won't see my face very long. Just wanted to uh, make it obvious that I'm doing something different again. So uh, one more radar tour for the evening. Um, things are picking up again in many areas that have not seen significant storminess yet. Uh, and uh, after that, I might leave the, the radar uh, on screen for folks to see for a while, but this will probably be my last live check-in of the evening unless something truly remarkable happens. So I'm going to turn off my camera now uh, and go back to the radar, uh, which folks uh, should be able to see. Uh, so... Uh, wanted to uh, focus uh, farther south on this one because finally um, the radar is filling in south of LA County and near Orange and San Diego counties. In fact, there's have been rapid development of heavy showers and thunderstorms off the coast. And all of these are just now reaching the immediate coastline, the beaches from Long Beach down, uh, down past uh, Oceanside, so all the way down uh, on the Pacific Coast, right along the beaches from southern LA County into northern San Diego County, and all of this is going to continue to move northward and gradually eastward. So uh, right now, seeing that these uh, these heavy showers and probably eventually some lightning associated with them right off the coast of Orange County, uh, this this big blob of of moderate type of precipitation, all of that's going to move on shore, potentially intensifying as it does so. Uh, looking down even farther south, San Diego, there's some pretty strong thunderstorms off the coast. In fact, if you look west from San Diego or, or uh, anywhere in San Diego County, uh, you'll likely see lightning uh, off the coast about here. So there could be some good photographic opportunities uh, for some cloud-to-ocean lightning strikes right now, uh, especially because right now the, there's no lightning immediately over land, so you're your risk of being struck would be low because the strikes are still distant. Anyway, just for the photographers out there, these particular uh, storms are moving, of course, essentially northward, so that might mean that these directly affect Orange County in the next hour. Uh, but San Diego County will be more in line for what's coming next, so it, what's likely to happen is this area will sort of fill in with a secondary band of showers and thunderstorms, and then San Diego County will get its downpours that way. You can actually already start uh, to see that happening as these heavy showers develop up near Oceanside. Uh, and then if you zoom out and look south, uh, south of the international border, there's plenty of additional shower and thunderstorm activity coming almost due south to north, and this whole, uh, this whole cluster is going to shift eastward a bit, and eventually the axis will be progressively farther and farther inland as the night goes on. Looking farther north, going back to LA. Um, okay, well, this is looking interesting again. Uh, very different than it looked like 10 minutes ago, even. Um, so you can see that larger area of precipitation moving up from the south. You can't see how intense it is from this radar site, but it's actually getting pretty heavy. More interesting now on the LA radar are these strong uh, convective cells uh, off the coast, uh, some producing occasional lightning. Uh, right off the coast here. These are, again, torrential downpours, although these downpours are brief. They're a little bit less persistent. Uh, let's actually look at the rotational velocity. Okay, so yes, it actually looks like these are the kinds of cells that could produce potentially uh, a water spout uh, or, or two. Uh, and uh, if you notice, actually, there are, uh, especially sort of in this, okay, let me get my drawing tool back, uh, especially sort of in this part of the cluster, you can kind of see there are a few couplets where the uh, rotational velocity inbound and outbound is uh, pretty tight. So again, as expected, brief marsh bouts, or if these move over land, there could be even a brief tornadic spin-up near the coast. If they hold together, there was a tornado warning for Ventura County last night by the... <clears throat> Weather service in Oxnard, that could happen again in the coming hours, potentially. These, this is still a very unstable environment with some wind shear and a lot of inst and, and that instability is pretty impressive. So keeping an eye on these very strong cells. Santa Barbara, uh, again, not all of the heavy rain is captured on the radar, 
uh, from this radar view, but it just continues to rain uh, moderate to heavy rain in Santa Barbara and the foothills above. It's just been like that all day. We're going to definitely be interested in seeing what rainfall records were set uh, really along essentially this axis uh, right along in the coastal plain eastern Santa Barbara County through Ventura County. Impressive, but probably not record-breaking rainfall totals in the, the foothills because, of course, those, are, those can be extremely wet places during atmospheric river events. But what's noticeable, uh, notable about this event is that, that we have seen those really extreme rainfall rates and totals outside of the mountains. And so that's why uh, in the Oxnard area and up into Ventura, where we saw record-breaking rainfall overnight, uh, that's where the daily totals and the hourly totals might be essentially uh, about as intense as we've ever seen historically or, or, or more so. Um, yeah, there, this, this is starting to look a little bit suspicious for a spin-up uh, of some kind or another water spout, of course, over water, but you never know what could move briefly and then bring some damaging winds. I'm going to move away from this dual view, go back to the single view. Uh, just point out that there are, you know, I know a lot of LA, parts of LA County, especially this part of LA County, the most densely populated part, has remained relatively dry compared to other areas so far. That's not going to last much longer. Rain is imminently beginning. And also, we see yet another back building band of showers that's trying to get going up here. So this, these spiral bands, think of it almost like uh, shower and thunderstorm spiral bands around a tropical storm. This is, of course, not a tropical storm, but some of the visual uh, characteristics are similar. That's a relatively warm and unstable air mass with slow moving bands spiraling into the center of the low pressure system. It, 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 in that sense, there, there are some similarities. Yeah, even, if I, even as I've been talking, this, this band keeps building uh, farther and farther south and eastward uh, as this other band uh, moves into LA and Orange counties from the south. Uh, in fact, if I go uh, back to Orange County, let's go back to the Santa Ana Mountains radar. Yeah, as expected, as I just mentioned, these cells are intensifying, and it looks like there's now lightning uh, right at uh, just offshore of New Newport Beach. So these storms are going to move inland, potentially torrential downpours hitting the coast almost all at once. It looks like this this is actually kind of developing right along the coastline. It's going to start raining everywhere suddenly. It won't be a nice west to east progression, but it's all popping up at once. So, uh, go down to San Diego again, see what's going on uh, all the way down south. Yes, as you can see, as expected, this is already starting to fill in. So, I'm going to go back up to Santa Ana. Uh, I might actually go back up to Los Angeles because of those suspicious looking cells off the coast in particular. As you can see, the LA radar state underestimates the intensity of all this precipitation, which is actually quite heavy uh, at the moment. All right, uh, let's see. Yep, uh, Aaron noting lightning. Uh, I just showed you that particular cloud to ground strike. Something, sometimes it's cool to be able to, to see that in real time. I'm just going to do a quick uh, quick check in, see what people are seeing. Uh, once again, uh, I do think that this uh, the rain and thunderstorms and the potential for localized flooding is going to continue for most most of the night. Um, so I, I'm not necessarily planning on continuously updating unless it looks like something really wild is happening and there is at least a slight chance of that given that there's already ongoing flash flooding up in Santa Barbara and Ventura counties some of these cells are headed back in that direction so that it could re, 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 uh, re worsen up there and there could be some localized flooding issues elsewhere um, some of these cells right now again up in this up in this region are, are looking uh, gnarly as we might say in California. Uh, let's see again this dual dual view rotational. Yeah, so there's a bit of persistent rotation specifically in this cell. Would not be surprised <clears throat> if that if that produces a water spout. Uh, we may never know if it does, since there's probably not anyone out there right now, um, and it's dark, so it might not be easy to see it. 
from land, but um, this is a pretty, uh, pretty hefty, and it's just uh, yet. <clears throat> Excuse me, you can hear me losing my voice a bit. Um, yeah, some nice uh, velo uh, velocity couplets showing up here. In fact, I'll, just for fun, let's just zoom in on this. Um, yeah, so when I say velocity couplet, what I mean is on the panel on the right, the red and the green in close proximity to each other uh, essentially means that there's winds blowing in exactly opposite directions uh, over just a, a mile or so apart. So what that suggests is that the uh, this storm cell is rotating. It doesn't directly indicate that there is a water spout or a tornado, but it certainly suggests that there could be in an environment like this, and that's actually a pretty strong couplet. Uh, zooming in even more, uh, again, as you're referring to this area in the last frame, um, and on the left you can see that there's actually some, some very strong reflectivity too, so I would assume this will probably end up getting a special marine warning on it because that's the kind of warning that the Weather Service would issue over water. And if it moves on land, there's at least a slight chance this could produce a tornado. But right now, this one actually might stay offshore. Um, it's still a quite a ways away. So, yeah, this one, actually, this one may move over uh, the Channel Islands. So, I'm not sure if there's necessarily anyone out there. Uh, to tell us if uh, if a water spout formed and move inland as a tornado, but this is you know just an indication that there is some severe weather potential, which is unusual. Severe thunderstorms, uh, not especially common in this part of the world, so it's notable when there's any possibility of them. Um, let's see what else folks are talking about here. Yeah, folks have commented that uh, the storms this year in general throughout California have produced a lot of lightning, and that is true, uh, unusually much. And this is partly because, again, the near shore ocean is unusually warm, and the air is unusually warm and humid. Uh, so this is something that I had noted at the beginning of the season, that the storms might be more characterized by convective precipitation and might behave a little differently than we're used to. Uh, so this is definitely one of those storms. Uh, yeah, again, this is a pretty impressive convection. Let me do, uh, let me go up to Vandenberg, see if that gets a better view of any of this. Not really, you can kind of see these cells, and you can also see better how just Santa Barbara just continues to get soaked. It's, it's an unceasing soaking there. Uh, Santa Ana Mountains, uh, go back. Yeah, so that cell that I was talking about that might have a water spout uh, south of Oxnard really shows up from a distance. It's looking quite impressive on radar. But the more interesting thing here uh, I think is, you can see now, all of this heavy rain with embedded lightning is now, in fact, actually there's quite a bit of lightning farther to the south. So if you, there's, here's the lightning strike that was mentioned uh, earlier near Newport, and then now there's a cluster of, of active lightning just west of Oceanside. So again, um, if you're in San Diego, you're probably still far enough away to be to safely go outside for to take photographs of lightning. Uh, no longer the case along the beaches of Orange County and northern San Diego County. The lightning is right overhead. So this whole band is going to move showers and thunderstorms across all the densely populated parts of Southern California in the next hour. This is pretty much what we've been talking about earlier. This is the, this is the main event for much of the rest of Southern California that hasn't gotten wet yet. Uh, looking again from San Diego, we again see, as I suggested that it probably would, we see this area sort of starting to fill in, uh, at least the northern end. So there's lightning uh, blowing up now. Still a good opportunity to look west from San Diego, or look northwest, uh, but no longer safe to be outside Oceanside northward from a lightning perspective. Uh, let's see. Um, let's go back to first Santa Ana Mountains radar, see what's going on. Yeah, that, that the center servers are moving through Newport right now. Uh, and then uh, LA, let's check back in on that, maybe a mini supercell might be fair to call it. 
Um, certainly has some impressive, uh, impressively strong radar reflectivity. Whoops, that's a little bit too close. Let's go back to that dual pane. Yeah, so okay, so this still has a very impressive couplet. Uh, so the winds are, essentially what this says is the winds are going like this and then like this. Uh, so again, that's a strong, if this were over land, that would be a good candidate for a Southern California tornado. This is the kind of environment where you tend to get them. We know that the cloud tops are tall because it, it's producing cloud to ground lightning. And actually, let's just see if there's a cloud top product here. I can uh, show you what that looks like. It's not very exciting visually, but this is essentially showing this, this, uh, this green color. So the cloud tops are up to about 30 to 35,000 feet. So this is a very tall thunderstorm by coastal California standards. Uh, and as you can see, this particular cloud is way taller than any of the surrounding clouds. That's sort of another indication that this, this storm is doing something a little bit unusual and different from the other cells around. Because as you can see, this cloud is, is much taller than anything else in the entire radar domain right now. So I'm going to bring... Uh, bring that back to the storm relative velocity because this one is starting to look real interesting. Zoom out a little bit. Leave that for a moment. I might wait for one more radar frame. I was going to uh, sign off then, but this got kind of interesting. Let's see. Let's see what happens next. Um, check in with folks and see what they're seeing once again. Go back down to Orange County, see what's going on. Again, you can kind of see just how much this interesting little cell sticks out like a sore thumb compared to everything else, but there is plenty of active weather uh, moving in to the south as well. Quite a lot of lightning right off of Oceanside, uh, just to the west. Uh, going back to LA. So this is really the most interesting thing going on right now by a pretty significant margin. Yeah, just kind of fascinating to watch that. So I think what I may end up doing this evening, uh, given that things are picking up and that a lot of people in LA County and Orange County are going to get hit harder, either actually right now, it looks like uh, most recent radar frame, it should now be pouring in Long Beach, uh, Compton down in Torrance, all of so southern half of LA County is getting wet, Orange County is getting wet, so that's all happening right now for the first, it's, it's f finally, some, some folks might say, but it is, all this is lifting northward. And if we go down to San Diego, yeah, so there's some pretty hefty thunderstorms right, right near Camp Pendleton right now. So again, all of this is going to move on shore. So a lot of the high impact weather for where the most densely populated corridor is is going to, of course, happen after dark. Uh, I guess that makes the lightning more vivid. That's something to watch for. Looking to see whether the weather service in LA. Uh, and by the way, uh, part of the reason why I'm doing this very long live stream where I'm dropping in and out and just having this live radar uh, on in the background is to test uh, the stability of really long streams 
during extreme events. So today is a notable weather event, certainly in Ventura and Santa Barbara County, less so elsewhere. But it's a day on which I had some time to engage this way, and well, there is actually something to talk about. It's not always the case that there's a, a very dynamic radar screen to look at. There is today, so it's a good opportunity to test this out. It's good to know this is essentially working, and this might be a model for the future during extreme events where I can, rather than speaking continuously for eight hours, I can drop in and out, do uh, updates uh, every five minutes or so. Uh, sorry, not every five minutes, four or five minutes uh, every hour or so. That might be a little bit easier uh, than, than otherwise. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, let's go back to the LA radar, see what's going on here. Still looks, actually now there's two cells that are interesting and one that was a bit closer to the coast. Let's see if that one has any meaningful rotation. Um, I guess there is, uh, so this, this cluster's got a little bit of rotation there. You can see the, the couple of small little, but these are weaker couplets. Still, I think this one is far more interesting in terms of uh, red versus green. And yet more rain in Santa Barbara. Uh, that's, that's sort of the theme. This whole event, no matter what's happening everywhere else, it's raining in Santa Barbara. That's that's the theme of the storm. Yep, so now widespread moderate to heavy rain all the way uh, coming up into LA County. So the north, northern end of this is um, just about making it to I-10. So the back end of the commute on uh, 405 and 5 is going to be a mess. Not yet, but give it 10 minutes and uh, it'll be freeway driving in LA rain. So, I'm actually seeing a couple of folks discussing how uh, today is now the uh, the top five wettest days uh, in Oxnard recorded history, and that's again with the potential for significant rain to fall yet between now and midnight. I mean, you see everything that's to the south. There's a lot more on the radar screen coming in, so it's possible that Oxnard will see. Uh, actually, let me just quick Google that. See what level uh, we'd have to we'd have to hit. Um, this is not a peer-reviewed paper, so these numbers may or may not be uh, correct based on what I can quickly Google. But it looks like uh, oh boy, yeah, we're pretty close. Uh, well, actually, this I don't necessarily trust that record. All right, let's see. Okay, so it looks like the, the all-time daily record in Oxnard is around six inches uh, on, from January 1956. Um, let's see where we are now. That will be an interesting question. Um, just pulling up some... Precipitation records from NWS LA. Um, that's not what I'm looking for there. Let's just see if I can get it, the raw data. 
maybe that's possible. A couple more clicks will tell me. Uh, whether I can get to that. In the end, I suppose it's not extremely important. Uh, it's clearly an extra extraordinarily wet day and a lot of that fell in an hour. But let's just see uh, where, we're, where we are for cumulative precipitation. Okay. So it looks like, uh, I think we may have hit the record. Uh, I'm having a hard time finding the specific data, so I can, I can uh, take a look at that later. But anyway, I uh, still think that the, the, a lot of the heavy rain is yet to come. A lot of folks are still going to get deluged imminently if they're not right now. And you can see that moving into LA County now. Let's take a look at that cell again. Still looks uh, kind of nasty off the coast. Again, this one doesn't look like it has a trajectory um, directly for the coast. It looks like it's sort of headed more in that direction. Who knows if it'll hold together by the time it made it to the coastline and around here. But let's check on the velocity again. Water spout watch. Uh, still, not as strong as it was earlier, but still a, a, a notable velocity couplet. So again, still some strong gusty wind and water spout potential there. Your only shot might be if you were right along uh, the coast in a dry slot, like right, right here, and you happen to look offshore at the moment there's a lightning strike that would eliminate it, that would probably tell you, okay, well, it looks like the Weather Service did just issue that special marine warning, I'm guessing, um, for a whole broad area. That's this whole gigantic poly polygon. Uh, but I think the main reason is probably this guy that we've been talking about uh, with a pretty strong velocity couplet. That's actually re-strengthening again. So again, that could be a water spout producer. Could be other brief spin-ups too. Uh, let's see here. Any more updates from official sources? Not seeing, not seeing much. Um, so what I think I'm going to do, I'll do one last... Uh, no, there's some nice photos being shared of the lightning off of San Diego, though. So as expected, it's a pretty substantial light show. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I was going to shut this down completely, but given what's going on, it's interesting enough, and it seems to be, uh, there still seems to be enough people logged in, there's almost 100 people on right now, so, um, fairly impressive, given this is the, almost the ninth hour of this live stream, which again, I haven't been on here straight for nine hours, but the radar has been on screen for nine hours, and I've been dropping in and out in this new experimental mode. I might leave the radar up. It'll be curated. I'll shift it around occasionally so you can see what's interesting. If for some reason something real big happens, uh, like a major severe thunderstorm over a populated corridor or another flash flood, major, uh, major flash flood sort of situation, I'll pop back in. Otherwise, uh, I'll leave folks with the radar. Uh, and again, this is a uh, if this were the arc storm, I would probably be staying up all night with you, but it is not, fortunately, despite the flood risk that there is. If this were an extreme fire weather situation and there were big fires burning, I might stay up as well, but again, fortunately, we didn't really see that this year, and this will pretty much uh, be enough to rule it out, even in Southern California, even if we get some strong Santa Ana events following, because I, I promise you, by the end of the night, everyone will pretty much have had a, at least a soaking rain and probably a heavy rain, uh, if you haven't already. Uh, 
so yes, uh, this we're almost wrapping up the radar tour. As you can see, the thunderstorms are continuing to back build off the coast west of San Diego and now extending inland as far south as ocean, as far north as Oceanside. Going back north once more. Heavy rain now. Wrapping back up into LA County. This is now all the way up to I-10 and it's pouring on the beaches in Santa Monica. There's lightning strikes now being observed over land near Santa, uh, Santa, just west of Santa Ana, near Huntington Beach, inland now. So probably torrential downpours and some street flooding down by Seal Beach and Fountain Valley. Uh, and then one more move up the coast to Los Angeles, where again we have this even more impressive looking uh, mini supercell thunderstorm now with that special rain warning for a potential water spout. Again, this is the one in question. Uh, it looks like, I'm going to recircle that so it's a little bit, I think the radar just shifted a bit. So let's see. Yeah, so now, now it's in there. Turn on the rotational velocity again. Once again, there is a pretty impressive couplet redeveloping. That's another strong little signal. So I'd expect the water spout, the water spout to be somewhere in that blue region that I just filled in. So, seeing that, uh, a, a very slight chance that one of these water spots might move inland as a weak tornado, as may have happened last night near Ventura. I wouldn't be too concerned about it, you know, uh, beyond the usual kind of wind damage you might get with a, with a big gusty storm. These are not Midwest style tornadoes, that's for sure. But still, it's notable that there's any risk at all. And I think uh, we'll probably leave folks with this image for now. I'm going to leave it up on screen for a bit longer. I'm not planning on joining live again tonight unless something very dramatic happens. If that does happen, I'll pop back into the same live stream. But I'm not anticipating it, even though many folks are going to see thunder and lightning and torrential downpours with local flooding for much of the night. And it is possible that up in Santa Barbara and, and Ventura counties, that there is renewed flash flooding because these waves of heavy precipitation with embedded torrential downpours and thunderstorms will continue. But tonight will be the main event for places from downtown Los Angeles south and east. So everyone should get uh, a good soaking uh, overnight in Southern California. All right, uh, you feel free to s stay tuned with the live stream I'm going to keep the radar up, and I will be keeping an eye on it. I'll be curating it. I'll be moving it around. And if for some reason something crazy happens, uh, I will uh, decide to jump back in. I'll make a note in the chat if I'm going to do so. Uh, but for now, I'm going to mute myself and uh, enjoy the radar. <laughs>